host, Karen Fitzpatrick Tully. And today's episode, we have Ambassador Ellen Salabre. Ellen has a history of rich accomplishments. Educator, legislator, diplomat, ambassador to the UN for women's rights, advocate of humanitarian causes, particularly with refugees, member of the Maryland House of Delegates and Minority Leader from 1986 until 1984, Republican nominee two times for governor, which she almost won, and finally, appointed by President Bush as the Assistant of State for Population, Refugee, Migration, and Migration. So, Ellen, thank you for joining our show today. It's an honor to have you. Well, thank you, Karen. It's a pleasure to be here. I know that you really started your career as a teacher. I did. But I, was, I was a science teacher in Baltimore County. I was a biology teacher. I taught uh, advanced students, and I loved teaching. And I think that was a great background for a lot of the other things that I do, because I'm always a teacher. Yes, like we teach everyone today in our society what's going on, truly, with the political environment. What drove you or impassioned you to get into politics? Well, I had taken some time off from teaching, and my husband, who was a first-generation American, came from... Uh, East Germany father, West German mother, at the time that the wall was still dividing a country. Same people on two sides of a wall. On one side, living under freedom, under a capitalist society. On the other side, living under tyranny. No freedom, no right to travel, no right to make any decisions for themselves. And we spent a summer in that country when, it was, uh, when the wall was there. I had an opportunity to see how differently people behave under different forms of government. And I came back with a passion for preserving the freedom in this country because I saw how socialism, communism, and they are the same. Socialism leads right into communism. Um, how the people have no incentive to work hard. They, they don't own their own property. My husband's family's home was confiscated by, by the communist government because they needed it for some refugees uh, at the time. And um, people just did not have the ability to, to, to accumulate the wealth that we do so freely in this country. So it, it really was an eye-opener. I understood for the first time what freedom really means, and it was uh, something that got me involved locally, initially, um, helping other candidates, and as a young woman, I was one of those Ronald Reagan uh, workers in tennis shoes, going out knocking on doors, and that was the start for me. Now, how do you see that experience paralleling, paralleling to what's happening in the United States today? particularly with, it seems like we're seeing more socialistic views. How do you see that happening? Well, it really frightens me that we have so many young people in this country who have been indoctrinated, I'm afraid to say, in school to think that socialism is good. They think that, uh, they, they hear promises of free this, free that, free education, free health care, and that all sounds very attractive until you realize that government has nothing to give you without taking it away from you first. And it, it, is, um, it, it, it is sad that so many of our young people do not know history and have no idea what's going on. Right now, Venezuela, Argentina, two of the wealthiest countries in the hemisphere who adopted socialist and communist policies. And now I've been in Argentina and seen grown men in suits rummaging around in dumps looking for something to eat. A country that 50 years ago was almost as wealthy as the US. And it, 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 it just boggles my mind that our young people have no understanding of how socialism destroys a country. And as you said, it's being indoctrinated. Uh, let's go back to your education background. Many people in our nation today are blaming all the problems typically on racism. 
and you had mentioned a breakdown, well, you had mentioned actually socialism in the schools, but there's also a breakdown of the nuclear family and um, rewriting history such as the 1619 Project. Uh, coming from a teacher's background, how do you see that's affecting our young youth today? Well, let's start with the breakdown of the family. And this is one of the greatest tragedies in our society. Uh, and it was driven initially by good intentions with the welfare system. But the welfare system in the 60s told a woman that if her husband or a man, the father of her children, lived with her in her home, she couldn't collect welfare. So it was the beginning of driving men out of the home so that women could live, instead of on their husband, on the government. We have gone now to a point that, if you look at Baltimore City as an example, approximately 75% of the children being born today in Baltimore City are born to a single woman where there's no father figure. And how can we expect that we're going to have anything but what we see today, which is dropout, school dropouts, um, a totally dysfunctional society, alcoholism, drug abuse, young men in prison, almost something like 90% of young men in prison are men who have never had a father in their life. Um, that, of course, falls right into the school system because children coming from a family, a, a lack of a family, uh, no one to really mentor them, to make sure that they're doing their homework, that leads to kids that are, are failures in school. And I'll take the best day. Thank you. Come back and talk about that some more. Okay. Thank you.